new Ford Ranger and we've battled some freaking epic New Zealand landscapes so we can review it for you. Ours is the Wild Track, but the Ranger comes in a variety of different models, so let's cover the basics. The Ranger is a proper ute and it makes a mad tow vehicle for your race car or your boat with a 3.5 tonne towing capacity. Under the bonnet there's a 3.2 litre turbo diesel engine pushing out around 147 kilowatts and 470 newton metres of torque. Inside the cabin you've got all sorts of clever technology including the Sync 2 system which gives you voice control for hands free phone, music, even your climate control, plus you can listen to your text messages and do your navigation. It's got a locking rear diff, hill descent control and you can shift on the fly between two wheel drive and four wheel drive. So that's the basics and now it's time to hit the road. So my feeling is Marty, if that way's north and that yeah. way's west, then we probably head that way. That makes there. no sense. Because see, It makes no sense we're going up the hill. Did yeah. Marlin swim downstream? No, upstream. Yeah, but to be, yeah, but for survival, you you, you walk hey, upstream. Have you not seen you any of these fish. documentaries? They go upstream. They jump into the mouths of the bears. You've never seen the marlin. The do marlin that? do that. You've never seen that on National Geographic. Anyway, so we the point is, is we are somewhere here. We're Maybe not we're on this side. You don't even know. It's, what are you looking? Maybe you we're doing? near Bob's reach around. We're definitely not near Bob's reach around. That's later. Look down here. There's catfish. That's what you want. Yeah. Let's just go. No maps required. All right, so we're going then. So we are here in the brand new Ford Ranger. Um, I don't know why, to be honest, because we've never reviewed a new car before, and uh, <laughs> I've never gone four-wheel driving. Have you? No, never. So we're the right people for the job then. Yeah, man. Look what we've got, man. Oh, we're looking, yeah, man. I got a four-wheel drive magazine, and we've got the Ford Ranger owner's manual. And I got an Atlas. Yeah, oh. Okay. Sweet, dude. So, the starters. Yeah, look, Dongara. Okay, that's the wrong country, <laughs> my friend. Of course, we're not really littering in the beautiful New Zealand. Okay, so I'm into neutral, I'm going into four low, I'm going into drive. And we're driving through a river, my friend. Yes. I think, I think that's known as a creek in full drive land. Dude, it is, it is like the Amazon. Look at this! Did it yes. Feel, did that feel good? Yeah, well, it, it, I, it didn't feel bad. Okay, let's be honest for a second. We don't actually know anything about this car at all, but luckily we've got the owner's manual. Can I stop halfway up a hill? If you want to, yeah. Will, I, will we roll backwards? You want to roll back? It's like a hill holder. And you're supposed to go um, as slow, no, as slow as possible but fast enough. Is that the, the term that they as use? As fast as necessary, as slow as possible. In full drive low, it's still, it'll still shift gears. Okay. But and you can do it manually as well. You can flick it across in the manual. It's pretty cool. Well, Martin, we're four wheel driving, my friend. We have 24 hours to find our way out of here and meet a barge which only comes once a week. If we miss it, we really will be stuck in the wild. Tell us a little bit about this beautiful place that we're in. We have no idea where we are. This is a station. Okay. Which kind of means just a massive, enormous block of land, which is 27 kilometers by 27 kilometers. Uh, it's one of the most remote places in the world. Uh, it's on the South Island, beautiful landscape. So it's a station, so it is a working farm. There's 35,000 units of animals here. This really is one of the most incredible landscapes on the planet. And now we've just reached a hill. We've got to our first hill. We're going down and then we're gonna cross a waterfall. And so there's a button here, which is a car going down a hill. So it looks like a little cruise control. I'm icon. gonna press that. Okay, hill descent control ready. What do we do then? Um, so it, it'll work at speeds less than 35 Ks. That's good. And deactivated above 40 and turns off at 60. It doesn't work when the diff's locked, it's just so it has full control and it's gonna, it's gonna control so the diff. So it's gonna break. take us down and break the wheel individually. You don't need your feet on. Okay, the car's it, doing okay it's that. doing it now. I, can you hear it breaking individual wheels? Yes, and now I do the speed with these buttons here. You can turn it up or down with the switch. Oh, just like cruise control. Exactly. But we're going down a hill. Okay, this is cool. And you can't take it front on, you gotta get a bit of angle on this lower. I'm wheel. really worried that I'm gonna like knock our lowered front lip off, but we're not lowered. So, it, but it's a similar tactic to getting out of a car park when you've got a lowered car. It's the same kind of process. And now, this is good. Get back on the this juice. This is good, get on the juice. 
Up we go. Oh, yes. Bit no, your Sylvia can't do that. For a couple of guys used to drag racing and drifting, we're feeling pretty good about conquering our first hill. But now this is a car review, so here's some more car reviewy stuff from the experts. So we know nothing about four-wheel drives or four-wheel driving, but this is what we know so far about this car. It's an actual proper truck, like a U, like it's on chassis rails. It's not just like a like in a, a, a same build as a hatchback. Like it's a proper truck. It's got a reverse camera, Martin. Mm, fancy pants screens, twin screens. Hill like, assist. Does the lane keeping thing. Yep, safety yep. stuff to make sure you stay in your lanes, which we've turned off on ours. Yep. You can change from two high to four high on the fly. When you go down a hill, you can press a button and it'll automatically brake uh, different wheels for you and then you use the speed uh, controls for the cruise control on your steering wheel to control it's, your ascent. It's got, like a blind, ascent. it's got like a blind spot identification thing, so you can tell when stuff's in your blind spot. Um, the collision thing, like a radar shooting out the front, so if you come close to like another person, it will, it will help you brake. The thing about that, is you can get a lot of this stuff in like high-end luxury cars, but this is a ute. Yeah. Like a legitimate ute, take it out of the country, do what we're doing type thing. Which is why, I mean, it's a working ute. In, in New Zealand, this is the biggest selling car. Yeah. They have. Yeah. They're crazy for the moment. Yeah, here. and it kind of makes sense why, like if this is what you do. But this is also a factory car, it's worth mentioning, with factory tyres. Factory tyres, exactly as it left the factory, and now we're trying to defeat these mountains with it. So, we're doing pretty well, Martin. The other reason that you and I have to be proud, Martin, is this car was designed by Aussies, mate. And exported to like hundreds of countries all over the world. Almost 200 countries. Made by Aussies and it's the most popular car in New Zealand. That's right. You know the woman today when I was getting breakfast? She didn't want to give me Vegemite. She looked at me funny like she knew what Vegemite was. It wasn't because of the Vegemite. Because you weren't wearing any pants. you got to do a bit of a KFC drive through driveway oh, type deal. Oh, do you? Okay. Do you have a veggie burger? Of course I don't have veggie burgers. I thought you said we're doing a KFC drive-thru. Yeah, oh, you mean though. getting into the car park to... like a KFC drive-thru, like this. I thought you meant we had to like order KFC, KFC drive-thru yeah, and then flick it the other way. You're a legit full driver now. Oh, am I? Yeah. Ooh. All right, let's go. Up the hill. Up the hill. All the grip, second gear, third gear. Oh, humpity hump. Another one. Here we go. KFC drive-thru? Yeah, yeah, KFC drive-thru. Oh! As we cross another little creek, it's worth mentioning that New Zealand has some of the cleanest water in the known universe. Fresh snow from the icy peaks that we conquered this morning melts and runs down the mountainside, creating crystal clear fresh water. And my friend here is pretty excited about it. You know what's in fresh water? Um, marlin. Really? Dude, I'm gonna catch me a freshwater marlin. Really? Yeah. The biggest marlin ever caught in New Zealand's like, in the hundreds of kilos, two or three hundred kilos, something like that. I'm gonna catch a freshwater, blue fin, white bellied marlin. You don't even own a fishing rod. Dude, there's a fishing rod. I've been carrying it the whole way since we got here. I've got a fishing rod. You've never been fishing in your life, man. Dude, come I'm on, man. I've known you for a long time. I've never seen you fish in my life. And now you're Mr. Fishing Rod Marlin Man. What was the last fish you caught and when was it? It was a swordfish. Did you even know how to catch a marlin? I'm, I've been catching marlin since like you were a kid. You think someone who hasn't been fishing for a long time would ever wear this shirt? Point is, I'm gonna catch myself a mad bluefin white bellied marlin, a big one. All right. I'm gonna impress fishing people everywhere. Cause you know fishing people are all like, check out me big fish. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm building us an epic camp by the way. You may have noticed we have no tent, no tent required because I'm building us a camp You'll out of make the... it. Your yeah. track record of survival. <laughs> he can laugh all he likes, but I am well versed in survival technique. SAS Survival Handbook. Oh, man. Everyone needs it. Bushcraft, your guide to pubic origami. T-Bone's guide to raising sheep, including breeding care facilities and dating. Updated edition with legal information. Nice. Rural delivery, poems and images from New Zealand. You can probably see what that one says. Home collection vegetables, full of vegetarian recipes. A staple for any survivalist. You supply the food, I'll supply the accommodation. I think that's a pretty fair deal. I have a question, survival man. Yes. Defiance in the face of adversity. 136 easy to remember techniques for being the sole survivor forward by Crom Thorsbun. When to take presumptive treatment. Malaria is more likely mean? if you have a fever, plus any of the other symptoms previously. Have you got anything to guard us against malaria? I can't speak for malaria, but what I can say is because we're in New Zealand, there's no snakes and no spiders. It's not like Australia. Nothing here kills what? you except rabid sheep. No, there's a sp there's, there must be spiders, but spiders, but they don't. Kill no you. bad ones. 
They don't even have Spider-Man the movie here. It was never released. Really? Yeah, because they, they wanted to scare people. They, they, no one knew what they were. They spider, had no... what's that? Oh, what's it? Never heard of a spider, eh? Oh, no. Oh, wow, this is intense. This is it, my feet are off. It's so weird. It's just driving itself. Okay. This I is love pretty that. cool. I love that. That's pretty awesome. That's technology actually doing something. I'm aware that you could be an expert four-wheel driver and use a 50-year-old four-wheel drive and be a boss at it. But for some people, like people like us, people who have not reviewed a four-wheel drive before, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that is pretty cool. Some technology is completely useless. Like, who needs a Bluetooth dildo? Waste of time, you know? <laughs> Whereas this, it actually does something for you. It works. As we continued down the mountain, we found some mud. Conquered some mud and we've conquered some cows. Now let's talk engine. Any car review worth its weight, worth its salt, is that the term? Worth its salt. Worth its salt. I uh, should talk about the power plant of a car. Uh, this is a 3.2 litre. 3.2 litre diesel, turbocharged diesel, common rail injection. Five cylinder? Five cylinder. That's freaky, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. You know, like those. XR5 turbos and, and, and Volvos and stuff that have five cylinder engines. This is a five cylinder engine. Okay. But it's a diesel. It's like about 150 kilowatts roughly. Far out, man. Get in there, dude. Slow. I'm just worried we won't actually get out again. No, you'll be right. We've got this. Oh, oh. wheel spin. Diff lock, dude. Yeah, can you diff, diff lock, lock me? Is it on? Hey. How cool is that? Mad. Well done. Here's some more reviewy stuff for you. The Ranger has storage compartments everywhere, including a laptop sized glove box and an integrated light that's in the cargo tray. There's rain sensing wipers, automatic headlights, electric power assisted steering. There's a lane keeping system plus adaptive cruise control available, which adjusts your speed based on the traffic around you. So there's two screens in here that you can totally customize, different gauges, dials, and stuff like that. This is all touchscreen, but what's really awesome is the power, no not the engine, we got like multiple USB powers and Martin, my favourite. There's a built in inverter. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So back behind here you've got a 240 volt plug that you can plug charges and all sorts of stuff into which is pretty handy. And you know what, with some of this technology, if if you can have it, why wouldn't you? For example, like it's, it tells you when your tyre pressure is low, yep. which if you are doing forward driving, if you drop your tyre pressure generally, and that reminds you that it's done. So when you get back on the bitch, when you like get out, you know, you get your inflator. And well, we've done whole episodes on that, like installing them, putting them in. It yeah. already has it, which I think is pretty cool. Just factory. Um, so and cool. what I like about it is that you can customize this. Mm. So you can have your RPM, you can have all sorts of different stuff there and set it up, which is actually really cool. So there's your nerdy facts, but now it's time for food. Are you hungry yet? What are we eating? Unlike some of the shrooms that you might find in Nimbin or up in Byron Bay, most of the ones around here are fairly safe to eat. They're also particularly delicious if they're brightly coloured and spotted. So these ones here, you just pick one of those. You can literally just pick those and get straight into them. That's a good shroom. Yeah. My friend hasn't had much luck foraging for food, so it's my time to shine. The crystal clear waters of New Zealand are famous for their fly fishing and at this time of the year they'll be teeming with freshwater marlin and I'm going to catch this one for dinner and cook it over an open fire. I left the security tag on my rod at the shop so I have to fish with it professionally. Big bending the rod. If this is what I think it is, this is going to be inside us tonight. After having no luck on the lake's edge, I've decided to go one step deeper and we're bashing our way through the bush in search of a flowing river. I'll be attempting an ancient and dangerous technique rarely seen in contemporary fishing and until now has never been documented. A technique known as the bait and flip. So what I'm going to do is slowly drop the lure in 
I'm going to start to drag his tentacles. So we drive up the river. You drive up the river. And according to you, this creates a wave. A bow wave. A bow wave. Yep. We can go through up to 80 centimeters of water in the ranger and the bow wave makes the marlin. Marlin. The marlin think that they're in the ocean. No. It, so that they come to us. They do think that. So it's an inbuilt thing. It's a little trick. So they it. swim towards they the car towards as we the drive water. up the just, river. Just slow, just slow. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what to I do. Just, I've yeah, never I'm, done this before. Well, I have, and this is the, the correct way. So the lure is now head first into the water. So now slowly start to creep along. And they should start jumping at any second. Bringing the lure up, and dropping back down. That's called the bait and flip. Well, I thought that down. was a sex move. Up and down and back in again. Oh, that's a big one. Big marlin. No, a big rock. Oh, I'm a fisherman. I fish all the time. I the, the, ta the tag is still on Look, your fishing stuff. Dude, honestly, I think there's a problem with my rod. No, honestly, no, the problem no. is with you. No, there is no problem I'm with confused. the rod. The problem is with you. The problem is me. It seems if we're actually going to be eating anything tonight at our camp, it's going to be up to me. And check out what I've caught. This is dinner. Really? We're hunting, yeah. Absolutely, you look at this, this man. Got them out of the river. Fresh crayfish, absolutely. He's a big guy, isn't he? But luckily, we've got a one ton uh, payload in here and a 3.5 ton towing capacity. So crayfish in a Ford Ranger, it's actually a perfect combination. Thanks for the marlin. A bit disappointed about the marlin. With the sun going down, it's time to go and set up our camp. We're going to be building a shelter out of rope, some plastic bags and anything that we can find in the local environment. Of course, safety first. Survival whistle. Shh. Shh. Mine's broken. Come on, man. Dude. It's, look at those spikes! Come on. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll do them oh, wow. There's some spikes. Our camp is really starting to come together and we're both super happy with the progress. Next up, time for a fire. Stand back. You ready? You got a lighter? So we've had a couple of problems getting our, our fire started. Um, it may be a faulty flint. We don't have a fire yet, okay. but at least we have our fresh crayfish. Or at least we used to. I took them out of the ute. Why? Because I couldn't stand looking at them. Did you hear them screaming? <laughs> Come on, man. Did you hear them screaming? No, no they, they don't scream. They don't have mouths. They scream, dude. They don't have faces. Luckily, I brought emergency supplies. <laughs> Got a gooch. Yes. Lightly salted strips. Ah, big bits. Lester's famous. Dude, how did you know to get this? That is so hard mm -mm. to get. That. That's the pink I like. Internet only. Really? Yeah, that's really difficult to get. Um, I will be back in a second. Okay. I thought our camp was coming together great, but not everybody seems to think so. We've, what have we done all day? You know, we've worked hard. We've worked hard. Since yeah. Sunrise. Dude, no one, right no now. one is doubting how hard you guys work. I totally get it. We agreed to, you know, pretend. You know, you guys are the only ones here. We don't have a support car. We don't have other crew here working it, but. We're not doing this, We're man. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Where's the marlin? With our crew refusing to sleep in our makeshift camp, we're spending the night in the car. Footy's in my face, dude. Sorry, man. <laughs> you guys sleep all right? You guys sleep all right? And there it is. New Zealand is a stunning and challenging environment, so it makes sense that this is the highest selling car here. This was our first time four-wheel driving, and while we're much more experienced on a racetrack or the mountain roads of Japan, it didn't matter what we threw at it, the Ranger kept going. Through mud, rivers, waterfalls, and with all the technology to help a couple of novices like us tackle the terrain. But what if you don't live in the windswept mountains of Middle Earth? What if you're just normal dudes like us driving in the city who need to tow stuff, carry things, and go on weekend adventures? I guess the real question is, would we own one to tow a race car? And the answer is, absolutely.
All right, so that is it. It's almost 24 hours and we've got to get our way to the barge, which is leaving any minute. So we have picked up the pace. Oh, wow. Four hours in the Ford Ranger and we have made it. We may not have caught a duck or a fish or made a fire or a camp for our crew. We don't know anything about four wheel driving, but the car didn't let us down once. And most importantly, as a couple of mates, we got to explore one of the most beautiful places on the planet, New Zealand. And oh yes, we will be back. have one last technology question for you. Yes, Martin. What happens if you put that in 2H? That uh, makes it rear wheel drive. And then press the button that looks like skids. And then you press the button that looks like a car doing skids. I don't know what that does. Shall we see? Yeah.